Hey guys, welcome back to the Art of Craftsmanship. My name is Dustin, and today in the shop we're going to be making a bushcraft knife. Not only any bushcraft knife, we're going to be making the epitome of the bushcraft knives. We're going to be making a replica of Ray Mears' wood lore bushcraft knife. This knife was designed by Ray Mears over a pattern of, of six years or so after using, for years and years, using different knives that didn't really do what he wanted them to do. Uh, for bushcrafting, he designed and came up with the wood lore bushcraft knife, and he's been using it for over 20 years now. And it's tried and tested. And there are a lot of other knife makers that make, you know, replicas and almost duplicates of the Ray Mears wood lore bushcraft knife. We're going to be kind of following the same specifications. We're going to be using O1 tool steel for the knife blade. We're going to do a Scandi grind on the blade. And we're also going to be using um, brass rods for rivets as well as brass tubing for a lanyard hole. Again, we're just going to try to follow all the specifics of the Ray Mears wood lore bushcraft knife and try to make something that is just going to work really well as an all around outdoors camping bushcraft knife. So let's get started. All right, so our dimensions for the wood lore knife, uh, the blade is supposed to be 110 millimeters and the entire length is 220 millimeters, which translates out to just over eight, uh, just over four inches for the blade and almost exactly four and a half inches for the handle. So the width is one inch, one inch tall and our thickness is one eighth of an inch. So all the supplies that I purchased for this knife, uh, the steel and the brass rod and the brass tubing was all purchased from Jantz Knife Supply. Um, and you can go to knifemaking.com. They have a great supply list and they are good on shipping. Um, I've always found that I get really good quality uh, supplies from them. So I usually order from Jantz. All right, we're going to cut this out with the uh, Milwaukee Porta Bandsaw, and I just have this clamped into my vise. This works really well. As you can see, I made sure I left the blue marker all the way around. I can still see the blue marker all the way around my, my uh, profile of my blade because the inner edge of that blue marker is my final dimensions as I was tracing the paper. That is the final dimensions of my blade. And I want to make sure I can grind down to that perfectly. So I left myself a little bit all the way around to grind to that. So I'll move over to the grinders now and clean it up so I'm all the way down to my final dimensions. I just put my original template back over my blade now, so I have my line set up. So I'm gonna go ahead and center punch each of these three holes. I'm just setting my center punch right in the middle. We're gonna punch all three holes and then we'll drill out all three holes on the drill press.
the holes drilled out really well. Uh, these are nice and clean. There are a little bit of burrs on the one side from pushing through, so I'm gonna go ahead and clean up that now. I need to clean up the flats a little bit on both sides. So I like to use this as a great little magnet I picked up from Harbor Freight, heavy duty magnet with a handle on it. And it works really well for holding onto steel when you're, anytime you're grinding smooth sides, gives you a nice little hold. I've, there have been some people who've asked about this. So nice little cheap magnet, but it's got the handle on it, which makes all the difference. So we'll just go ahead and scribe with the tip of that drill bit right along that edge. And then, so we have a, a line, and then to make sure that you have a perfectly centered line, you flip your steel over and scribe again. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up for my actual grinding of my bevels. And I use a piece of angle iron set at 90 degrees, um, and I'll clamp my blade to this. And because I'm using this, and I'll set up the tool rest of my grinder at the degree that I want. And so a standard Scandinavian grind is about 22, 23 degrees. Um, so I'm gonna set mine up at about 11 degrees right now. So that way I have that total of 22 degrees after I do 11 on each side. And we'll start there and see how it feels. If it works well and it's looking good, then we'll keep going. If not, we'll make adjustments when we need to. Next thing I wanna do is I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna add additional holes in here. I have a 1 8 inch drill bit. I'm gonna go and I'm gonna add a bunch of holes into the tang and that just gives me more material for the glue to go through and stick on when I do the final glue up with this handle. I'm also gonna use a little chamfering bit and I'll go through and I'll chamfer all of my holes. Again, just to give as much surface area as possible so that way when I do the glue up, we'll have as much glue you know, between the wood and the handle as possible. All right guys, our next step is to do a couple normalizing cycles and then do a quench. And for that, I'll be using my new forge. And this forge that we actually just recently built and shot a video of. So if you're interested in that, you can go back and see this made out of refractory bricks and angle iron and threaded rod. And it's all done with things that you can get from the hardware store and make at home. Uh, the only thing I did purchase are these two burners. But if you wanna see that video, we'll put a link in the description below. So I'm gonna go ahead and start light up the forge and we'll start on the normalizing process.
working on right now is doing my normalizing cycle. So what I'm doing is just bringing the blade up to kind of an even bright red, dull orange heat. And then I'll bring it out and I'll let it cool down back to a gray steel cool. So that way the, the structure, the grain structure of the steel has a chance to kind of even out, make a really nice, clean, even grain structure. So after you grind on a knife and after you, you know, hammer on it, it kind of, all the grain structure gets kind of funky. So you want to do normalizing cycles before you do your actual quench, and that'll help to even out your grain and make it nice and clean, so that way you get a really nice, clean knife. So we're just about to that heat now. I'm gonna go ahead and take it out, and we'll let this cool down, and then we'll put it back in for a second normalizing. I want to heat up my oil before I do my final quench, so I'm going to get just have an old railroad spike, put that in there, get that nice and hot. I can use that to warm up my oil. So for my final normalizing cycle, um, I'm just gonna make sure that this will be the hottest heat. I'm gonna get a let, it, let it get all the way up to like a nice orange color. And I'll just test it a couple times, make sure it's non-magnetic all the way through, which it is. So I'm gonna keep it in the heat just a little bit longer, let it get up nice and hot, and I'll pull it out to normalize. And then we'll go in for our final heat before we do our quench. All right, so while my blade is heating up in the forge, I'm gonna talk a little bit about my process that I'm gonna do and a little bit about the quenching. So the way that steel hardens is you have iron and carbon and they lock together when they're quenched really quickly. So when you need to get your steel up to non-magnetic, non-magnetic is about 1420 or 1425 degrees. So once you get up to that temperature, you wanna keep it in the heat a little bit longer because you wanna go up to maybe 1450 or so to get a really good quench. So I'm gonna heat my blade up, I'll check it for non-magnetic, and when I know for sure that it's not magnetic, I'll keep it in the forge for about another minute or so before I do the quench. When I go in for the quench, I'm also gonna make sure that I am quenching the edge of my blade as evenly as possible. I'm gonna make sure it goes nice and straight into the oil and also as evenly and as much as the blade as possible. So I'm gonna kind of tip my tongs up so that way I can quench my knife as evenly on that edge. You, the reason why you wanna do that is because when you're quenching steel, you need to make sure that both sides of your steel are cooling down at the same rate. If one side cools a little different, you're gonna get more warping. Now, warping is something that all knife makers have to deal with, but anything you can do to keep yourself from getting warping in your knife is the best thing to do. So I'm gonna to try to make sure I go into my oil really even and really straight, so that way I don't get more warpage across my blade. Try to get even cool down to get below that non-magnetic temperature and harden the blade.
it looks like we're nice and straight. No warping, which is awesome. We just gotta go ahead and test it for hardness and then we'll prepare it for our tempering. hardened edge. I'm just getting some of the forge scale, the black and forge scale is coming off, but it's definitely hardened all the way. So we're ready to do a temper, but beforehand we'll just grind off a little bit more of this so we can see nice clean bevel so we can see the colors during the tempering cycle. So we're gonna go ahead and do our tempering cycles just in the standard kitchen oven. And I wanna do these two cycles at 400 degrees for two hours each. And I'll pull out the knife between each cycle and let it air cool before I go back in for the second cycle. All right guys, well I just got finished up doing both tempering cycles. Again, that was uh, two cycles at, two, at 400 degrees for two hours each time. Um, and I got a nice kind of straw color across the blade which is what I'm looking for for the temperature of my final temper. Um, unfortunately, there is a slight warp and it's, it's very slight and you probably can't see it in the camera, but there's a little bit of a warp here uh, in the middle of the blade, but there's a good way to test your blades to make sure they're flat. You can always lay them on a flat surface and just tap the end. So you can see this one has a little bit of a wobble to it where I'm getting a little crest. Um, and if I flip it over, you can see it's, it's flat that way. So there is a little bit of a crest on the one side and it's kind of about, about midway or so within the blade. So I'm gonna go ahead and move over to the vise now and I'll show you uh, the way that I straighten my blades if I do have warps in them after heat treat. Find three screws or three lag bolts. I have, these are lag bolts and they kind of have a flat surface that's unthreaded at the close to the top. So that will sit against my blade. And basically when you have three points of connection, your middle point is going to bend when you put pressure on your vise. So you just need to put this point of pressure wherever your bend is, and you wanna tighten down just a little bit on your blade to get the blade to bend your opposite direction because you have to go past that bend to come back for it to stop in the middle. So, you know, steel is springy, so if you just go flat, it's gonna keep bending back, so you wanna go a little bit past flat, but just be careful, take your time. Don't rush it, don't push too hard because this is also a really easy way to snap a blade that you've been working on. So just uh, go a little bit at a time, a little bit past. You can see now it's bending the opposite direction. And then I'm just gonna loosen up and just move it a little bit up and down to a few different spots. Just check for that. I was able to get the warp out of the knife so it's nice and straight now. So next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move over to my four by 36 grinder and I'm gonna clean up all the flats on the flat sides, both sides and all the edges get to get all the forward scale off of the knife. Um, and then I'll move over to the one by 30 and I will continue and finish up my Scandi grind on the bevel. Now at this point, this knife is heat treated and it's ready to go. So you have to be really, really careful after you're doing heat treat to make sure your knife stays cool. So I have my water bucket close at hand. I'll just continually, you'll see me continually dipping this into the water bucket and I won't be wearing gloves. I wanna make sure I can feel the steel. I don't want it to get heat up at all. So I'm just gonna keep it wet, keep it cool and keep continue my grinds until I have everything where I want it before I do my handle glue up.
So I have this nice piece of black walnut. I like this kind of darker area, so I want to kind of include some of that in there, but can't do, go too far. I'm just going to trace this knife, trace my blank so I kind of have a general shape of where I'm going to be. And then I'll take this over to the bandsaw and trim it short, and then I'm going to stand it on its end and I'll trim it lengthwise as well so I can get two two sides that will be matched across the grain. So I'll trim it down the middle here as well. Oh, that's gonna be nice. This uh, handle scan material, this is the acrylic that I use. That's an engraver's acrylic, uh, but it's light fast. And this here is actually a black white, a two ply black and white with actually a little, uh, a little mystery to it, which I'll tell you guys about later. But this will be nice because it'll be the metal and then black and then white and then the black walnut, which will darken up really nice once we oil it. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, shape the top of the handle where it transitions from handle to the blade. I'm gonna do that now because once I get everything glued up and I'm shaping the handle, I don't wanna to have to try to shape any of this area in here, which is gonna be right against my blade. And I don't wanna scratch up my blade at that point because I'll have everything nice and fine um, before I, after I do the glue up. So I have everything pinned together now. I'll go ahead and shape the top of this and do any transition shaping here at this point now. So 
So I just now finished up my uh, front edges of my handle. So we're ready to glue everything up. just finished cleaning all the squeeze out around the front of the knife and it looks like we have a really nice squeeze out all the way around everything else so I'm gonna go ahead and just let this set up overnight completely we'll come back tomorrow and finish shaping the handle all right guys it's the next day and we're ready to pull off the clamps and start shaping the handle I'm gonna start marking out the profile of the Coke bottle shape of this handle. Uh, it's narrow in the front, and then it comes to a palm swell in the middle of the handle, and then it tapers down toward the back and then back out once you get all the way to the end. So I'm just gonna mark off a few different dimensions about halfway, and then I'm gonna split that difference, and then I'll start putting in my dimensions for how thick I want the front to be, how wide in the palm swell, and then how much further down in the back when it tips down in the back of your hand.
All right, we got the handle all finished up, feeling really nice. But before we do the final oil up, I'm gonna go ahead and use my stropping belt and sharpen the blade. All right, guys, well, we are all done. Everything is finished. Finished sand the handle, the blade sharpened up, and the very final thing that I always do, and it's the most beautiful thing, is oiling the wood. That just, that last moment where you get to oil it and you just see the natural beauty of the wood just pop out. It's a gorgeous thing and I love doing it. Let's go ahead and oil it up. All right guys, well, we're all finished up, but I did tell you about halfway through the video when I was preparing the wood scales and the liners, those black and white liners, that there was just some, something special, something secret about that. So let me show you what that is. So those white liners are actually glow in the dark liners. So they just glow right against the tang. I just think that looks awesome. Just a super cool characteristic and just something a little different. I think it turned out great. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for watching. This turned out really, really nice and better than I could have thought. Um, it's just really fun knife to make and it's just a really cool experience to try to make this knife, this the Ray Mears Woodlore knife. This is kind of the epitome and the high mark of what bushcraft knives are and what they've been for the last 20 years or so. And it's just a gorgeous knife and a gorgeous uh, shape. And so I'm super excited to get out this spring, do some backpacking, do some camping, and really put it to the test and see how it works out. But we hope you enjoyed watching the video. If you did, make sure you give us that thumbs up and like, and also subscribe to the channel and check out some of our other videos as well. Um, you can also follow us on Instagram at The Art of Craftsmanship to just see other things that I'm doing in the shop. I try to put pictures up there all the time, as well as sneak peeks of some of our upcoming videos as well. So last thing we're gonna do is go ahead and put it to the test.